In 2007, we made a discovery searching for the unexplained. We found a series of recorded events that introduced us to the pantry ghost. A family started uploading videos to the internet, documenting the experiences in their home. Uh, after we eat, we'll go to the movie. My dad is in town. Mike Webb, say hello. Say hello. Hello, and my new mom. <laughs> it started with a number of mysterious occurrences and progressed into what some consider to be the first compelling documentation of a manifested spirit. I see you behind the dresser. That spiraled into a chaotic progression of encounters. Mm -hmm. The videos spawned an almost cult-like following with millions of viewers online. You okay? These videos have influenced a new genre of supernatural films. In 2011, the producers traveled to San Diego to interview a member of the family who lived in the home at the time of the sightings. My name is Jody, and I'm going to talk about the whole pantry ghost experience. My husband was very eccentric. He was deep into meditation. He talked about being a breatharian. Um, he hardly ever ate. To understand the pantry ghost, you're going to have to understand my husband. The producers had been trying to get an interview with the family since 2007. In 2009, they were able to interview John, the man behind the camera. Since releasing the videos, John has been sought after by numerous television shows, news outlets, and print media. Because his house had been broken into several times, by amateur ghost hunters. He agreed to interview us on the condition that his identity be concealed. I'm John, and I filmed the pantry ghost in my home. It all started when I was a kid, and I would fill up the hummingbird feeder, and then I would uh, go to school, and when I got home, the hummingbird feeder would be empty. And I always wanted to be there to see the hummingbirds feed. I didn't want to just fill it up felt like I was missing out on something. So one day I just played sick, and stayed home from school, and um, just waited by the window for about three or four hours, and finally a hummingbird came. And I felt present for the first time. I felt like I was sharing a moment in time with this hummingbird, and everything slowed down, and I could see the wings moving, and it changed my life. For the first time, I felt like I was present, and. Um, like a frozen memory in time. Well, as I became older and my young 20s, um, I really got into being present and into meditating and um, trying to go with the flow of life. And, you know, a lot of people, years fly by, months fly by. Um, it seems like their life just flies by. For me, I feel like I live every minute. He had OCD. He he was obsessed with the power of now. He always had to be in the present. He was actually kind of like that ever since I met him. So I would go to the park and I would, you know, do my meditation and um, be as present as I could. And once I hit that state of clarity, I would take my walk 
and I felt like time slowed down and I would notice all of my surroundings. When you get in that state, you start noticing things changing around you. You could walk by a rock 40 times and then you know, the 41st time you take your walk, when you're present, you notice a change in the rock. I would also walk by signs. One day you would walk by that sign and you notice something different about the sign. And I don't know, you know, are people supposed to notice these changes? Is it just me? Is it because I'm in the moment? I began meditating at home. That's when I started noticing even things within my house were changing. I would leave a switch up at night and I'd wake up, the switch would be down. I was so present that I would notice little changes around my house. I came up with a solution. I started leaving post-it notes all around my home. If I left a light switch up, post-it note. Wednesday night, nine o'clock, light switches up. Everything around the house was changing. We had post-it notes everywhere. I would come back the next day and look at the light switch to see if there was change. If he set his keys down, he read a post-it note, I set my keys here. It can happen to anybody. If, if everybody slowed down and took the time to notice every little change that occurred in their house, they, they could get obsessed with it. I was starting to think it was all in my head until at night, I'd make sure all the doors were shut, and I would shut the pantry door. The next morning, the pantry door would be open. I would tell my wife, you know, did you open the door? Um, I shut it last night. I was the last one to bed. Not everybody would notice that the pantry door was open every morning when it, it had been closed the night before, but he, he noticed it. It happened so many nights in a row, I decided to set up my camera overnight and film the pantry door. So he bought a camcorder and started setting it up at night just pointed at the pantry door to see what caused it to open. Go to bed. The next morning I watched the film and that's what happened. I actually saw the door open by itself. On film, I captured this. I didn't know what to think of it. So the next night, shut the door at night, set up my camera again. And again, the door opens. I go, wow, this is more than a coincidence. It's happening at the same time. It opened two nights in a row at 12.34 at night. I saw the footage. He caught the pantry door opening the same time every night, 12.34. I go, this has to be a coincidence. I set up the camera again a third night. And again, 1234, the door opens. Go, oh, wow, okay. I could, it's something I couldn't explain. I didn't know if it was the wind or the knob wasn't working right or what it was at that point. I had filmed the door opening so many times at night, like clockwork, 1234, it opened every single night. I started going through home movies of times when I filmed around the house. I started looking for things in home footage. My family had come to town, and I was walking around with the camera, filming the whole family. Hello, say hello. Hello, and my new mom. <laughs> I go by the pantry door. I saw a shadow or an image in the pantry door. I actually found something that amazed me. 
to me, it looked like more than a reflection. To me, it looked like something was in the pantry. Went back and looked at the footage that I filmed at night. And I looked at it closely. Every time it opens, right before it opens at 12.34, there's an image in the glass. Things got really strange. I saw the footage and I didn't see a, an image in the pantry, but he noticed it. That's why I decided I'm not gonna leave the camera overnight again. I'm gonna stay up and film the door opening. Me and Ariana went to visit family for a couple of weeks and he's not very social, so he stayed home. And when he did, he started manning the camera as he left it out at night. So I get my camera out. It's 12 o'clock. I started filming the pantry door. Yet again, 1234, the door opens. Only thing I could think of in my mind is to shut the pantry door, see if it'll open again. I walk up, I shut the pantry door, take a few steps back. Looking through the viewfinder of my camera, something appeared. walk up to the door again, open the door just to see inside. Nothing was inside the camera. So I go, okay, I gotta look at the tape. I play the tape back and I see what's obviously a shadow of something inside the cabinet pressing against the glass. I watched it and to tell you the truth, I was a little scared. This time when it opens again at 12.34, he decides to shut the door and something presses its face up against the glass. I was more frightened watching the tape over than I was when the door opened because it was obvious it was something else in the cabinet. This is the first time I actually saw something on the camera. We watched it over and over again, and he said, I have to put this online. I decided to put it online so that maybe some other people could see the footage and give me some answers. Have they had these same experiences? And when I started putting these videos online, it just exploded. It becomes a huge internet sensation. People um, online are debating whether it's real or not. People were giving me these great explanations of what I captured. and some experiences they've also had where they've seen things and things have changed around them and they have no explanation but their ideas are really helping me out. He starts chatting back and forth with these people online and he decides to invite some of them over to our house, some of the people that don't believe it. There was one person in particular that I would chat back and forth with and he had similar experiences to I had and he was fascinated by my footage, you know, what I captured. So. I invited him to my home to experience this in person with me. This guy John comes from Sacramento. He flies all the way down. So he comes to my house. We stay up. 12 o'clock. We start filming. Hi, I'm John. It's day 10. 12.03 a.m. Still nothing happened.
my god. Oh my god, dude. What the hell is that? Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Go, go, go. Whoa. Go in. Go, go. Crazy. I told you. We went and immediately watched the tape. We had to make sure we captured this. We still can't explain it. My husband and John come show me the footage, and there's John's still shaking from his experience. Uh, image appears, and it was amazing. We see something come up to the glass. I tell him, go, go up to the glass, go up. He actually goes up to the glass and touches it with his hands. And that's when it looked like a face came forward, like pressing against the glass, and he jumped back. I was startled. Our first instinct was to go up to the cabinet, see beyond the glass. That was our first instinct. We looked inside, but nothing. We watched that tape over and over again. We immediately put it online. We wanted everyone to see this. And he wants to stay another night and film more. And I think it was a mistake giving him our address. So we actually make John leave. I started thinking in my head, what would happen if I locked the pantry door? He decides to put a lock on the door because he figures if there's a lock, it won't be able to open. Would it stop the pantry from opening at night? And again, it 12 o'clock, set up my camera, got as close as I could to the door, started filming. Whatever was inside that pantry wanted that door open. I immediately ran and played the tape back. The door didn't open, but I heard banging on the door. So he zooms in and a, a face appears, but this is a different face. This is as close as I've ever been with the camera. And it startled me because it's not the same image I was seeing before. This image looked different. It looked almost angry and played it over and over trying to get a good look at this image. And to me, it was just amazing to see the image that close and with that great a detail. Every video that has been made available online has become a focal point for debate. The vast trove of commenters include many believers as well as non-believers lending many to share their opinions on the authenticity of the footage. Even television shows have weighed in on the subject. The producers took the source tapes to a post-production facility to put their theories to a test. They contracted a video professional well regarded in the Hollywood community. 
Hi, I'm uh, Stefan Schmidt. I'm a digital media expert here in Hollywood. I'm an editor and a uh, visual effects consultant. So I received the original tapes, the camera masters, from the production company and I loaded the footage into my edit system here, first into Final Cut and into uh, also After Effects to be able to analyze it a little bit better. And we have it up on the computer right now. So I, I seen these experts talking about that there is a edit point in the footage. I have reviewed the footage several times and I cannot find a clear edit point. I think what they're referring to is interlacing and other artifacts that happen in digital footage uh, through compression and the way you acquire the footage. The original footage was acquired on uh, tapes just like this, uh, digital videotape. This is a fairly outdated format. It's standard definition, so it's not high definition, and it's acquired on 29.97 frames a second. And it's interlaced footage, which in the process of compressing it and putting it on the internet, there's a lot of artifacts that can happen when you, when you deal with this footage. And the source is not great material from the start. So it's not like you're dealing with an HD source where you have a very clear image. This image is already compromised when, when you basically get it from the camera directly. Let me show you some examples where you clearly see interlaced frames, where you see basically this weird artifact of a frame being duplicated, or it looks like it's almost being duplicated, it's not exactly the same frame. In the video I, uh, that we've seen, the experts mentioned this as a dissolve, and it's clearly not a dissolve, it's just an artifact from interlacing that happens all the time. In order to, uh, to get a clearer image of the ghost, what we did is we loaded the footage directly from the camera tape into my computer system here and uh, we ran a bunch of filters through it to enhance the image. We brought up all the levels, you know, we changed the curves on it. We also turned it into a black and white space just so we can get a much clearer uh, view of the ghost than you could ever see on footage that was downloaded from YouTube. After analyzing the, the footage and seeing the camera original tapes brought directly into my system, there, for me, are clearly no edit points. This footage looks completely authentic to me. In my 10 plus years of uh, dealing with uh, all sorts of uh, digital media, um, I can say that this looks absolutely authentic. I became so obsessed with this pantry. My wife said, I had a good question. She said, what would happen if we took the pantry door off? So we decide we're gonna take off the pantry door. I thought it was a great idea. Maybe this will stop my obsession. I, I was up every night trying to film this door. So we took the door off. That may have been a big mistake on my part because that's when things started happening strange around the house outside of the pantry. Other things start occurring around all around the house. My daughter started hearing voices at night. My daughter starts having experiences with her. A lot of strange things start happening. Ariana was a very active seven-year-old at the time of the pantry ghost sightings. She was full of life and loved to be outdoors. But after the summer of 2007, that all changed. The day my dad took the pantry door off was the first night Mabel talked to me. The first time I met her was when I was trying to fall asleep at night. A voice asked me what my name was, and I said Ariana, and then I kind of woke up. And then she said her name, and she said it was Mabel. Ariana, what are you doing? Oh, I'm playing hide and seek. With who? My friend Mabel. Okay. Would you want to play hide and seek with me? Sure. Okay, I can play the real person, so I'm going to actually look for you and I'm going to do all the counting, okay? Alright. Okay, and you're going to be the one hiding. Alright. Okay, ready? I went outside in the hallway in the corner count to count ten. so Ariana could go one, hide. One, two, and three, I was counting, four, and the light went off. Five, six, what? Turn off the lights, cheating. There we go. Six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Here I go. 
Better be in a good spot. Went down the stairs, and it looked like I saw the closet door shutting. Where are you? Closet. Gotcha. Ariana. 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 See you right in the dresser. Rihanna? You found me! Oh. When I saw Ariana, a wave of fear hit me. And I realized I saw something else in the corner. I ran up the stairs. I go to her room. I open the door, and I see her behind the dresser. Ah, I see you behind the dresser. And then I hear giggling. I look to my right, and something's under the covers. I lift the covers, and it was Ariana. It all dawned on me right then, what I saw in the corner. After we watched the video, my dad asked a thousand questions about Mabel. Mabel would only talk to me when my eyes were shut at night. She'd ask me questions and I'd answer them. I had to explain to my dad that the images that he saw in the pantry were Mabel. I asked her, do you, do you ever see where the voice is coming from? Do you see who's talking to you? And she said, yes, she has. One night, I asked Mabel, what do you look like? She said, do you want to see me? And she said Mabel revealed herself to her. Mabel told me if I looked at a light long enough and then looked away, I could see her. So I turned on my light and I stared at the bulb. I turned it off, and I saw her. I closed my eyes as hard as I could, but she didn't go away. And that's when I knew by me taking the pantry door off, it was like I almost released something upon my household. I called a teacher of mine who teaches transcendental meditation to come to my house, and she had this gift. She was able to get into this meditative state, close her eyes, and draw images of things around her that maybe, you know, someone wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye. John asked me to come to his home because he was having bad energy throughout the house. The producers traveled to Arcata to interview a clairvoyant medium, one of the few people who witnessed firsthand the events that took place in the San Diego home. She used her gift to make contact with Mabel. I'm Penny, and I was John's teacher and friend. 
I have the ability to feel and to see the energy of a home. I close my eyes and I can feel the energy that comes through this home and it can be either good or bad. This energy was bad. We wait till 12.30. We start filming her drawing. I saw her and drew her on paper. At 12.34, I hear a scream up in the room. Ariana? Ariana? Are you okay? They both pulled my hair. Oh no. Who was that? At 12.34, I hear a scream up in the room. What is that? Ariana? Me and my wife run upstairs. Are you okay? They both pulled my hair. Oh, no. It felt like that night somebody pulled my hair. I think Mabel felt like it was her fault that we were leaving. Like we were abandoning her. Yet again, is it my fault? Am I interfering with the natural course of this being? The spirit? Am I too involved? After my daughter's hair is pulled and I see the image I saw in the attic, I tell my wife, we gotta move now. We gotta move out in less than a week. I want out of this house. She wants out, my daughter wants to move, we all wanna get away from the situation. We start packing. And every night, we start hearing crying at night. The whole last week before we moved, we heard crying in the house. And we don't know where this crying is coming from. This wakes us up. So, I go to bed with my camera. One of the nights we hear crying, my husband gets out of the bed, grabs his camera, and starts looking for the crying. I wasn't sure what I was seeing. I get up. 
I open the door and I see something, like a shadow in the corner. I tell my wife, come here, you've got to see this. And I'm not going to get out of bed at this point. She says, no, I'm not moving. She stays on the bed. I'm alone on this one. And then he goes back again, and he opens the door again. And this time, I see the full entity standing in the hallway. And then he slams it and gets all excited, and I want to know, what did you see? What did you see? My heart was racing, so I slammed the door. I told my wife, we're leaving now. That was the first time my dad ever saw Mabel. Once he showed me the footage, that was it. We told the movers to come the next day. We moved out right then. I considered me and Mabel friends until we started to move. Then things started changing. The scariest part of all was the pictures. We developed pictures family pictures, and there were strange things in the pictures. After picking up our photos, we noticed two pictures that frightened us. They're photos of our family sleeping at night. The only thing that makes sense to us is that Mabel took those photos. Ariana has a connection with the spirit, and it remains unbroken. I told that family to move right out of that home. It's day 10, 12.03 a.m. Jody, you're not feeling good? that family to move right out of that home. Yet again, is it my fault? Am I interfering with the natural course of this being, the spirit? Am I too involved? You found me! No. Did Mabel tell you where I was? What? Ariana? Are you okay? Mabel pulled my hair! How do you know you didn't imagine it? What do you mean, how do I know I didn't imagine it? Why would I make something like that up? Mabel was real, she really pulled my hair, she really talked to me. I did not make any of that up. 